Je voudrais du soleil vert Des dentelles et des TF Des photos de bord de mer Dans mon jardin d'hiver Je voudrais de la lumière Comme en Nouvelle-Angleterre Je veux changer d'atmosphère Dans mon jardin d'hiver Is there room to do both? Can't they hold off on this until we see the Mueller report? I would think so, but you know what I think happened, Harris? They saw how sensational Michael Cohen was as a witness, how compelling the, the two million people that watched, the way they got to ask questions. What I don't think they fully understand is that the rest of the people that they want to get front and center are not going to be cooperative. They're going to have answers to their questions. They're not going to look to, to turn the president into some evil villain like Michael Cohen suddenly seems willing to do. You put Don Jr. But he or was Eric only doing that on issues of race and cultural issues when it came down to Russia collusion and the thing that I thought we were all watching for. Well, he did uh, give us new information about... He Wikileaks. said there was no way that he would know. He didn't have any evidence. No, basically was right. the answer. Well, from going him. over but, and over. But, again. but, but he, Thomas Massey showed that he's like, yeah, it was it was July 18th. That's when I heard the president talking about WikiLeaks, and Thomas Massey was like. This came out in June. Like, he, he pointed out how flawed some, Cohen's some, timeline was. Some of it was. did. But and particularly about WikiLeaks. Well, that was our conversation. Be a lot here's, in. here's the thing. I mean, first of all, when you talk about going back into someone's previous history, Whitewater happened long before Bill Clinton became president. Totally. And elections have consequences. Bill Clinton. Right. Totally. But my, I totally my agree. point all in terms of today is... I actually I agree with Kennedy that we need we Democrats need to focus on the most important issues. Part of the challenge is one of the reasons this was such a broad list is that they don't have all the facts. They actually don't. So know. why not wait until Mueller is but finished? This is broader than Mueller. A lot of these investigations and issues they're looking into have either been siphoned off to the Southern District of New York or are separate from the Mueller probe. Mm -hmm. So they're different issues. You don't Mueller. want to wait for those facts but, to come forth. But Mueller won't cover those issues with his facts. But the Southern he's only, Southern Southern well, he's only right. looking at two specific New York issues. Will. Congress has a constitutional role to get some of these questions answered. I have, I have a very important question. Why do you love Mike Pence so much? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you do. No, he'll you become president. The president will get impeached. The Senate will throw him out, obviously, because he's done so many bad things. <laughs> and then you'll have president. But that's actually that's no, actually a good I, point. I, I want to ask them why we why I don't like Pence. Pence. You why we just want to make him Democrats will be able to do something to different based on history. Yes. Right. So Newt Gingrich, former House Speaker, and others have said. You know, there was political damage. There was fallout to, to seeking impeachment. I'm paraphrasing it, but that's the gist of what they've okay, told if, me. If Democrats, so if that's the case, why well, do Democrats think that Donald, they'll come out any differently? I think they're not exactly the same scenario. There is a concern about that, Harris, and I, I take your point. Donald Trump, But impeachment is the same scenario. If it's Democrats, the same word, if Donald the same Trump comes in with less political support than Bill Clinton had going into the process... He, he, Donald that, Trump's numbers are much lower than Democrats Bill Clinton's were. Democrats hated what Republicans did so much with investigations and Benghazi and going after Hillary. Why are they doing the exact same? Because we believe it's not the same thing. We believe here there are real issues that have not been looked into. You don't that the think American Republicans people, believed there were real issues I with think Benghazi? In the eighth, really? by, by, oops, I just threw my pen at Kennedy. By the no. eighth investigation, when all of the questions had been answered, by the eighth investigation, I Benghazi. think they were doing it for political reasons. By the they, eighth investigation. Investigation. Yes, well, I they, did. They, they four of our Americans have died in that. that. Yes, and I was I, I was part of that administration, and I wanted these questions answered. I've as never well. heard you talk in the collective we. Until as Democrat, you're always you're yes. You you always say I don't represent every other Democrat. Do but I feel like you do on this issue. I feel so? like I represent Democrats on this couch. No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, yes, I feel like my job is to bring forward the perspective from the just, party I love I to be a part of. I was if this yes. was a united, un, uniting issue for Democrats more than some others. I'm I curious. think Donald Trump is a uniting issue for Democrats. It is Wednesday, 
the 6th of March of 2019, and you are in West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. I am your chef de cuisine, Justice Putnam, and our daily special is Smothered Benedict Wednesdays. Well... <laughs> Ivanka gets a security clearance. Jared gets a security clearance. Everybody gets a security clearance. Wow, they're handing out those security clearance like they're uh, Russian nesting dolls. And I think that was the whole plan all along, wasn't it? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I, I at the top, I just couldn't help. I try not to do or have anything to do with Fox. But every now and then, uh, comic relief is, uh, you know, needed. And, uh, yeah, so the Fox Outnumbered panel was quite amazed and actually shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And that was true shock. And they were a little pissed, also, that the Democrat on the panel actually identified with the Democratic Party. How dare she? I mean, especially since, uh, you know, the whole Fox brand... <laughs> is, is propaganda. They can't have actual uh, facts <laughs> or whatever, whatever they want to call it. They'll, they'll call facts opinions. And they were uh, quite pissed, uh, not shocked. They were, they were a, a bit peeved, uh, especially Kennedy. You know, I'd like Kennedy to, uh, you know, stop using the one name Kennedy. I, at least I use my uh, last name. You know, I used to go out in the world only as justice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but then I decided, you know, I have a last name too. And Kennedy, I think, is besmirching the Kennedy name as we have come to affectionately uh, feel about it. So stop it, Kennedy. Get Get that other name up there. All right. Come on. Come on. Honor your parents. Unless that last name is your, of your parents' name. Well, enough of that. Uh, Fox outnumbered. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we surround you. <laughs> and also, what is this? The, the Democrats are falling in line with the Republicans again. It just pisses me off. Like when Biden collapsed, uh, when, when, uh, Clarence Thomas, during his confirmation hearing, accused the panel, the Congress, of committing a high-tech lynching because they deigned to put Clarence Thomas to task because of his insane conservatism. <laughs> yeah, I'm a black man and you're attacking me. Wait a second. You, you liberals all, all complain about it, but now when you're attacking me for real reasons, that's wrong. See, that's what it gets down to. They play the refs constantly. This whole thing about Clinton being impeached was over nothing. Yes, a lot of people say it was sexual harassment. It was two adults. Let's be clear. Oh, yeah, there might have been a power differential there, but still, two adults. Let's be clear. Okay? And uh, not not that I think that lying or dissembling is correct, but, you know, you, you usually don't uh, publicize that you're having an affair and uh, behind your wife's back. I, you know, I mean, normally you wouldn't do that. But if you wanted to get technical like the Republicans always do. Um, because what I want to know is why didn't anybody bring up Henry Hyde's dalliances? Oh, I know he said they were youthful indiscretions. He was 44. They didn't bring up anything about Newt Gingrich, who was a loudest braying mule in the whole deal. I'm not a mule, but a braying elephant. If we want to get the, the symbols down correct. I mean, he was working on his third wife. I mean, she wasn't his third wife yet, but he was having an affair with the soon-to-be third wife, who, guess what, was also an intern. Yeah, he married his, like, teacher, high school teacher. And then, uh, I believe, one of these wives had cancer, and served, and he served divorce papers when she was in, in the hospital with cancer. Nice. And then he moved on to an intern and then moved on to another intern. And he might even be, I don't know, is he on his fourth or is, is Cal Calista um, the third? 
I, I, I get mixed up. But no one brought that up. I mean, they didn't have any moral ground to stand on. But Biden collapsed. High-tech lynching. So what is the Democratic Party, our leadership, collapsing on Elon? She never said anything anti-Semitic. She complained about the state of Israel. I mean, there's a lot of criticisms there, right? And she also vociferously complained about Saudi Arabia, but I guess you can't do that either now. Especially when we're trying to get them nukes. Why? Well, hobbyism with nukes, that's going to work really well. Uh, well, enough of that. What's on the rest of the menu? We actually have a curated show for you today. We do. <laughs> so, in continuing in the Bistro Cafe of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy, NASA tried to fly a pollution-spotting plane over Houston after Hurricane Harvey caused massive chemical spills, fires, flooded storage tanks, and damaged industrial plants. But Trump's EPA said no. No. <laughs> if you measure it, we might have to do something about it. Trump's pick for the Office on Violence Against Women doesn't understand gun violence against women. Well, that's why he was picked. <laughs> Come on, it wasn't a bug as a feature. And House Democrats have hired a veteran Manhattan prosecutor who specialized in Russian organized crime for their investigation into Donald Trump. And that comes on the heels of Trump moving the current uh, uh, in lead attorney in the U.S. Attorney's Office there uh, out of that district and moving her into the number three spot. Though there is a little bit of concern about that. We'll probably talk about this or speak about this tomorrow. Uh, Liu was actually interviewed for Trump for the position that she's just being moved from. Chess pieces? I don't know. Sounds like checkers to me. After the break, we then move to the chef's table where the top U.S. general in Europe said the United States should not sell F-35 jets to Turkey unless Ankara drops plans to buy the S-400 service-to-air missile defense systems from Russia. Hmm. Maybe that's what uh, Trump and Vlad talked about that only the translators know. Curious. And... House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings slammed the White House for its attempts to defy the Constitution. <laughs> well, get in line! All that and more on West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Bon appétit. of our homepage at netrootsradio.com to the rightish of the page is the chat room link monitored by Kelly Lincoln. Hey, get in there and chat. Kelly monitors it. Uh, of course, she has to go to work and make money to pay the bills, so remember that. But uh, do, do engage. To the leftish of the chat room link at the bottom of our homepage, of course, at our homepage at netrootsradio.com. You will then notice the contribute button and please do become a recurring Patreon of Netroots Radio. Um, we have some equipment that we need to purchase, so we've been putting aside some money to be able to do that. And we also need to pay our bills and your recurring contribution helps us deflect that quite a bit. And I, I, I've been making these entreaties uh, almost every time I do a show, but uh, uh, it's it's dire. So thank you for your generosity. Also, uh, if you would like to contribute in the name of my campaign to not run for president, never, now more than ever, uh, you can do that. And and please do. And I should mention uh, Jeff Merkley, my, uh, my senator, said he's not running either. And he's going to be uh, 
putting his efforts towards his own reelection. And uh, that would be a good place to, I don't know if you, yeah, if you feel like it. I'm sure that Jeff would uh, take the maximum allowed. <laughs> so, so thank you for your generosity in all aspects and making sure that we elect more and better Democrats. That is the prime directive. You can follow Netroots Radio on Twitter at Netroots Radio. Follow me on Twitter at Justice Putnam. I post the show notes and links diary about 10 minutes before showtime on Daily Kos, and I try to get the links to that on social media pretty uh, much around that time as well. But you know how it goes. It's kind of a busy 10 minutes before the show starts. And uh, let's see. Oh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Cookbook West Pickup Podcasts. Later on in the day, uh, by way of Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, TuneIn, iHeart, YouTube, iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, they're everywhere. Oh, righty. This first uh, offering here in the Bistro Cafe of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy, Smothered Benedict Wednesdays, will no one rid me of this priest is uh, from the L.A. Times by Suzanne Rust and Louis uh, Sahagan. Uh, so Trump doesn't like to be uh, measured, <laughs> obviously, because the truth might come out, huh? In the weeks after Hurricane Harvey's catastrophic sweep through the Houston area, which resulted in chemical spills, fires, flooded storage tanks, and damaged industrial plants, Rescue crews and residents complained of burning throats, nausea, and dizziness. 1,500 miles west, in the high desert city of Palmdale, California, NASA scientists were preparing to fly a DC-8, equipped with the world's most sophisticated air samplers over the hurricane zone to monitor pollution levels. The mission never got off the ground. Both the state of Texas and the EPA told the scientists to stay away. According to emails obtained by the Times via a public records request and interviews with dozens of scientists and officials familiar with the situation, EPA and Texas state officials argued that NASA's data would cause confusion and might overlap with their own analysis, which was showing only a few isolated spots of concern. Now, this is the state where a fertilizer plant blew up and destroyed a whole community right next to a school, an elementary school. Yeah. Now, they're a petri dish of what happens when you don't regulate uh, industries, okay? Like the chemical industry, the fossil fuel industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People die. NASA might actually have some accurate data to conflict with this fudge data that these guys are coming up with. Well, you know, they are in the government, aren't they? I guess. At this time, we don't think your data would be useful, Mike Honeycutt, Texas Director of Toxicology, wrote to NASA officials, adding that low-flying helicopters equipped with infrared cameras... Were all that were contracted by his agency would be sufficient. I like how infrared is able to measure air quality. Maybe they do it by some sort of inference. You know, you see a cloud here, it shows up on the infrared. You uh, look on the color spectrum chart and you go, yeah, that looks like a small isolated spot. We don't need to worry. EPA deferred to Honeycutt, a controversial toxicologist who has suggested that air pollution may be beneficial to human health. These are the same people who think that we should bring back childhood diseases because our kids are being coddled too much. The response stunned NASA scientists, many of whom had flown similar missions in the past, including over the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And I wish journalists, once again, this is my pet peeve, it wasn't an oil spill. It was a blowout. It was an oil blowout. Come on, LA Times, where's your style manual? Ever since the Chandlers left, you guys have gone downhill, and I didn't even like the Chandlers. 
An EPA spokesman said the decision to waive off the Hurricane Harvey mission was made by Texas state officials whose own pollution monitoring efforts included mobile bus units and crews with handheld devices on the ground. That way they can really keep it to just a few isolated spots. Now, NASA scientists say that had the DC-8 been deployed, it would have provided the most comprehensive and detailed analysis of air quality in the region, allowing for a more thorough understanding of the situation. A thorough understanding of the situation is not what you need when you have liability lawsuits coming your way. Everybody knows that. Casey Quinlan of Think Progress brings us this next offering here at the Bistro Cafe of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Now, this uh, article actually comes on the heels of a 37-year-old uh, judicial appointee or nominee who uh, was worked for or led this anti-LGBTQ group, uh, basically, you know, your common right-wing federal Federalist Society uh, Looney Tune judge, uh, 37 years old, has now been uh, approved for a lifetime appointment to the bench. And uh, I guess impeachment is the way to get rid of all these people, and that will be a long, drawn-out process now, won't it? Yeah, I I don't know. Civil asset forfeiture should be part of this process, I would think. If you gained through an illegal means, you, that that property is part of a crime. So all those judicial appointments, all of those policy decisions about icebox baby gulags, all of those have to be forfeited under the civil asset forfeiture law. You would think... Well, I know. This particular article is about a Republican whose career has been defined largely by a record of opposition to LGBTQ and immigrant rights. Well, this is like a universal forum who falsely claims guns will protect women from violence and is being considered to lead the Office on Violence Against Women. She has also made claims that women owning guns protects them against violence which is not supported by the research. They can't stand the research. That's why the CDC had the clamps put on them for so long about just counting gun deaths. Couldn't even do that. It's against the law. Trump tapped Shannon Lee Gosling for the head of the office, which offers grants for services related to sexual assault, intimate partner violence, and stalking. Cool. I think what she's going to do is that she's going to arm all these people. Of course, they'll all have to pay. And so a whole industry will arise out of it. Um, uh, And uh, she'll teach them how to, uh, what, uh, protect themselves against sexual assault with a gun that will be taken out of their hand and used against them. By an intimate partner in a violent situation after you've learned how to stalk them back. They stalk you, you stalk them back. You get the gun. Yeah, and then the little lady will be called a witch for hurting the be- the, the the good guy with the gun. And then uh, she'll go to jail if, if she's lucky. Because mm-hmm. she might... I don't know, be burned at the stake instead. The Senate Judiciary Committee rescheduled this nomination hearing for Gosling, which was initially slated to take place yesterday. A number of women's rights groups have opposed her nomination and said her record signals that she would be an ineffective advocate for women, especially due to her history of inaccurate claims about gun use and violence against women, do you think? Most notably... Gosling made a claim about violence against women and gun use that is not grounded in research. Well, she wrote an amicus brief on the District of Columbia v. Heller case, 
uh, when she was chief legal counsel for the Southeastern Legal Foundation, another one of those right wing think tanks that's uh, part of, a, of the whole Federalist Society, by the way. And she stated that women who are confronted with a sexual assault are significantly less likely to experience a completed rape if they resi resist with a weapon. Now, she had referred to the research that claims guns, quote, eliminate the disparity in physical power between the sexes. Really? Does it now? Julie Owens, an expert consultant on domestic violence matters who has consulted for entities including the Office for Victims of Crime Training and Technical Assistance Center and the National Human Trafficking Training and Assistance Center, told Think Progress that it is troubling that someone leading the office would misunderstand this kind of violence. Because when victims experience an attack, they might also freeze in response. The research shows that uh, actually the gun that's supposed to protect the woman is used to complete attacking the woman almost every time. But of course, the one or two times that uh, maybe the perpetrator will be plugged gets played up as if that's what happens all the time. And it doesn't. You are in more danger. And there's been anecdotal evidence, meaning that people have actually testified in front of Congress to how they felt safe having a gun until that got used against them. And then now they're advocates for like, you know, maybe that gun's giving you a false sense of security. Now, in addition to her relative inexperience and in policy issues involving violence against women, her work at the South Eastern Legal Foundation also opposed LGBTQ rights and rights for undocumented immigrants. The organization filed a friend of the court brief on the U.S. court case Obergefell v. Hodges, which was on the fundamental right to marry for same-sex couples. Her organization argued against that right and wrote, the court has never recognized a fundamental right to same-sex marriage or applied a level of heightened scrutiny to classifications based on sexual orientation. And the foundation sued former Alabama Governor Bob Riley, claiming that offering driver's license exams in multiple languages violated the state constitution. Well, I guess she's perfect for this position now, isn't she? Rosenball of Reuters brings us this final offering here in the Bistro Cafe of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Uh, we're going to go a little over here on our break before we get to the chef's table, but it's okay. We're a salon. The U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee said yesterday it had hired a former federal prosecutor in Manhattan with experience investigating Russian mobsters and white-collar crime to lead its probe into the Trump administration. The hiring of Daniel Goldman is the latest move by the House's new Democratic majority to add legal firepower to an expanding list of investigations into the affairs of Republican President Donald Trump and his associates. I should add here that the Network's Radio Style Manual normally precludes us from using the term president when associated with one Donald Trump. But Republican president, I think, uh, can get by because it doesn't really signify that he is actually of that office, but only appointed. OK, and not by us, but by a hostile foreign power. <laughs> so 
And uh, if you don't know who Daniel Goldman is, uh, you've seen him on MSNBC quite a bit. He had been a uh, legal expert uh, on, if not all their shows, most of them. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Committee, Representative Gerald Nadler, recently announced that he had retained Barry Berkey, or Barry Burke, a prominent criminal trial lawyer, and Norman Eisen, a former advisor to President Barack Obama, to work on his expansive probe into Trump and other issues. And Representative Adam Schiff, the chair of the House Intel Committee announced that Goldman joined the panel in February as a senior advisor and director of investigations. Schiff also named a new budget director and three other people for various roles. Uh, let's see. The committee's probe into Russian interference in the 2016 election and possible collusion with the Trump campaign has taken on new life since the Democrats took control of the House in the November elections. The panel is set to hear testimony from Michael Cohen, though a president's one-time fixer for a second time on Wednesday. That's today, since he turned on his former boss. Goldman was an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York for a decade through 2017, serving as the lead prosecutor in the conviction of Las Vegas sports gambler William Billy Walters for insider trading, but more relevant to the committee's probe is Goldman's tenure as deputy of the S of the Southern District's organized crime unit, where he oversaw a major Russian mob case against more than 30 individuals for money laundering and racketeering. And Goldman attended last summer's trial of former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort and was at the December sentencing of Cohen, who is due to start a three-year sentence in May for violating campaign finance law and other crimes. I would hope that now that we have a Democratic majority, maybe, maybe, maybe we could go back to when the hearings were uh, and the questions at the hearings were run by legal counsel, not by the representatives themselves. Because the representatives obviously are playing to the cameras. And if you have lawyers actually or investigators actually posing the questions, boy, you really get to the meat of the matter. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? <laughs> supposed to do. Yeah, that's the key. <laughs> All right, let's get to our break. And when we come back from the break, of course, we're going to go through weather from around the world and finish up the stories that we've curated for you today. You are listening to West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. And we will be right back. You are listening to NetworksRadio.com. Please hang up and try again. <laughs> From a point at sea to the circles of your mind, a new force is at work for planetary transformation. New radio for a new earth. This is Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. This week, Survivor Arctic Edition. Arctic is one of those slow-building thrillers that draws you in rather than assaulting you with the action. Directed by Joe Panna, Arctic is basically a one-man show by Mads Mikkelsen, best known for his portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in the short-lived TV series Hannibal, and certainly shows that he has the chops to carry a movie, even one with little dialogue and where the performance is mostly body language and physical acting. As the film begins, we find Mikkelsen playing the lone survivor of an Arctic plane crash attempting to survive in the frozen forbidden tundra. We never learn his name or anything about his life, but we know he is desperate to survive at any cost. For the first part of the movie, we see him catch fish, write the words SOS in the snow, and wait. All that changes when a new person joins him, a woman who's the lone survivor in the crash of a helicopter which had come to rescue him. The badly injured woman, who is only semi-conscious on her best days, becomes his sole companion and the only other human seen on screen. Her story, known to our protagonist only through her ID and family photos on her person, only heightens the stakes for him to bring them to safety. The struggle leads to many nail-biting moments as their sled-bound journey progresses. In many ways, this picture is similar to the Robert Redford Lost at Sea Adventure All is Lost from 2014. The mood and the tempo are much the same, but Mickelson Penna and cinematographer Thomas Thomason put their stamp on this film so it doesn't feel like a rip-off with snow instead of water. 
Potter. Overall, Arctic is a well-paced, relentless drama, which will leave you satisfied, even with its albeit minimalist conclusion. This has been Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. Catch up with us at TakeTwoMovieReview.com and feed us back on our page on YouTube. This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Steve Mursky. I think there will come a time where we will experiment with an automated strike zone. Rob Manfred, the commissioner of Major League Baseball. Manfred spoke February 27th at the Sport Techie State of the Industry Conference at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. As the name suggests, Sport Techie deals with the intersection of sports and technology. Back to Manfred on the automated strike zone. The technology has gotten much, much better. Mm -hmm. We are much closer to being able to do that. But, you know, the way I always answer this question, and it it, it remains my answer, is whether you have the technology or not, I think this is one of those areas where um, you have to think about the management of the game on the field. Mm -hmm. You know, the source of authority for umpires or one of the sources of their authority is they call a ball or strike. Uh, and every single play in a baseball game. And before you alter that fundamental dynamic, you really have to think through what the consequences of that's going to be. Manfred also addressed the question of whether baseball analytics have gone too far. I can't get enough baseball data, but I know some fans think that all the numbers and the reliance on them for decision-making are taking some of the fun out of the game. I don't waste a lot of time Um, on the question of whether there is a point where analytics goes too far. And and the reason I don't is it doesn't matter whether I think it's going too far or not or even objectively whether it's gone too far. The fact of the matter is that's how people are thinking about the game, okay? That's how they're analyzing the game. It's going to happen. You just can't tell people, well, you know, I know you have available to you a way to determine – with a lot of accuracy, how good Rob Manfred's going to be for the next five years before you sign him. But you know what? We don't really like that outcome, so we don't want you to think about it. I mean, that's not the real world. The Major League Baseball season starts March 20th in Tokyo, where the Seattle Mariners will take on the Oakland A's. For Scientific American's 60 Second Science, I'm Steve Mursky. Sweetie, want some fruit? You have to use the right tool for the job. A power drill is the wrong tool to slice fruit. Just like an antibiotic is the wrong tool to treat viruses, including colds and flu. Antibiotics are only needed for certain bacterial infections. When they aren't needed, antibiotics won't help you, and the side effects could still hurt you. Ask your healthcare professional when an antibiotic is the right tool and when it's not. Visit cdc.gov antibiotic dash use. Hi, I'm Tom Harbin, and since you're listening to NetRootsRadio.com, show your progressive side and go to the Donate button on the bottom of the homepage. It's progressives like you who power NetRoots Radio and keep the progressive message beaming everywhere 24 hours a day. Just go to our Donate button at the bottom of NetRootsRadio.com. Thank you for keeping progressive radio at full power. I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1879. A steamship named the Colorado docked in St. Louis, Missouri. On board were black migrant workers on their way to Kansas in search of jobs and a better life. They were the first arrivals in what became a wave of black migration out of the U.S. South known as the Exodusters. Nearly 20,000 black workers and their families left Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and other southern states to make their way to Kansas. They were fleeing the oppression of the Ku Klux Klan and the racial violence of the South. A depression in the 1870s had made matters even worse. White planters sought to offset their losses due to the depression by charging black sharecroppers higher interest rates to farm their land. 
some black workers began discussing leaving the South. Benjamin Papp Singleton, a former slave and abolitionist, became a leader of the Exoduster movement. He called for black workers to make a great exodus from the repressive South. Hand bills declaring, Ho for Kansas, circulated among Southern black sharecroppers. It was a long, tough journey up the Mississippi River and then west. A reporter from the St. Louis Globe Democrat visited the families of the first group to arrive in St. Louis. He found 280 men, women, and children whom he described being in utter want. Local St. Louis black residents organized food and relief for the hungry travelers before they finished the final leg of their journey. In all, black migrant workers purchased 20,000 acres of farmland in Kansas during the 1870s. Later, the search for jobs and freedom from violence and oppression would bring workers to cities like Chicago and Detroit as part of the Great Migration. Labor History in Two brought to you by the Illinois Labor History Society and The Rick Smith Show. For more information, go to laborhistoryin2.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on the Twitters at Labor History in Two. It's time for Nicole Sandler's What's News from NicoleSandler.com and the Progressive Voices Network. Another day, another Trump lie about another Trump scandal unfolds. The latest accusation against Trump is that he pressured then-Chief of Staff John Kelly and White House Counsel Don McGahn to grant his daughter and senior advisor Ivanka Trump a security clearance against their wishes. According to sources, both men refused, so Trump went ahead and gave her the clearance anyway, which the president apparently has the legal authority to do. CNN's Pamela Brown broke the story. We've learned that President Trump pressured his then chief of staff, John Kelly, and White House counsel, Don McGahn, to grant his daughter and senior advisor, Ivanka Trump, a security clearance against their recommendations. This is according to three people familiar with the matter speaking to me and my colleague, Caitlin Collins. Well, as you know, the president has a legal authority to grant clearances, but most instances are left up to the White House Personnel Security Office, which would then determine whether a staffer should be granted one after the FBI conducts a background check. But after concerns were raised by the personnel office, President Trump pushed Kelly and began to make the decision, saying things like, it's no big deal, they'll probably be leaving soon, going back up to New York, so that it didn't appear that the president himself was tainting the process in his family's favor. Now, after both refused, Trump granted the security clearances, uh, according to sources we've been speaking with. And of course, this development comes on the heels of the New York Times reporting, Anderson, that Trump ordered Kelly to grant Ivanka's husband, Jared Kushner, a top security clearance. Despite concerns raised by intelligence officials, uh, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says the White House cannot comment on security, security clearance issues, nor can it respond to every anonymous source. Kelly could not be reached for comment and McGahn declined to comment for the story. Like father, like daughter. In a recent interview on The View, Ivanka Trump denied her father was involved. There are a lot of people that question whether you were given special treatment by the president, overriding other Absolutely officials. Not. Can you speak to that? There were anonymous leaks about there being issues, but the president had no involvement pertaining to my clearance or my husband's clearance. Zero. Well, what were the problems early on? There weren't any. The White House has rejected a request from Congressman Elijah Cummings, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, to hand over documents related to the security clearance process for Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, and other top Trump aides. The White House counsel called the request, quote, radically intrusive. Michael Cohen is back before a closed session of the House Intelligence Committee on Wednesday. It was just a week ago that we witnessed this exchange between Cohen and Congresswoman Alexandria ocasio Cortez. Cortez at the House Oversight Committee hearing. To your knowledge, did the president ever provide inflated assets to an insurance company? Yes. Who else knows that the president did this? Alan Weisselberg, Ron Lieberman, and Matthew Calamari. And where would the committee find more information on this? Do you think we need to review his financial statements and his tax returns in order to compare them? Yes, and you'd find it at the Trump board. Well, the New York Times is reporting that following that testimony from Cohen that Trump exaggerated his wealth to insurance companies, New York state regulators have subpoenaed Trump's insurance broker. Stay tuned. Satellite images appear to show that North Korea is rebuilding a facility that had been previously used to test long-range missiles. 
NBC News broke the story Tuesday. Courtney Kuby, Andrea Mitchell, Carol Lee are now reporting that within 48 hours after Trump left following that disastrous failed summit, North Korea was already rebuilding a key long-range missile site, a site that had essentially been dormant since Trump's, since Trump's first meeting with Kim Jong-un last year. According to this exclusive NBC News report tonight, that missile site is now showing activity consistent with, quote, preparations for a test. We know this thanks to commercial satellite images obtained by NBC News. These images were taken March 2nd. That's two days after the summit fell apart. The images show what experts say is renewed activity at this long-range missile launching site. And I should clarify, these images don't show an actual missile being moved to the launch pad. But um, one of the authors of this report points out, quote, they have already tested a few of these, and it looks like they are preparing the launch pad for another act. A new poll from Quinnipiac shows that two-thirds of Americans believe our sitting president is a criminal. When asked by the Quinnipiac University poll, did President Trump commit crimes before becoming president, 64% of voters say yes, the president did. Only 24% say he did not. On whether Trump committed crimes after becoming president, 45% say yes, 43% say no. In the poll taken from Friday through Monday, voters say they are more likely to believe the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, at 50% versus 35% who believe Trump in their back and forth. And 58% believe Congress should do more to investigate Cohen's claims about President Trump's unethical and illegal behavior. 35% disagree. But nearly 6 in 10 voters, 59%, are against Congress beginning impeachment proceedings against the president. Cohen is scheduled to appear at another private session of the House Intelligence Committee today. And that's a bit of what's news for now. I'm Nicole Sandler. If you appreciate these reports in the Nicole Sandler Show, I hope you'll consider making a contribution. My work is 100% listener supported, and I can't do it without your help. Find out more at NicoleSandler.com slash donate. From UN headquarters in New York, I'm Luke Vargas with your World in Two Minutes. President Trump moved to strip Turkey and India of preferential trade status this week, cutting the allies off from a decades-old economic benefit aimed at helping developing economies avoid paying tariffs on a slice of their exports. In a pair of letters to Congress, Trump blamed India for failing to ensure market access for U.S. goods. Turkey, meanwhile, had simply graduated from its status as a developing nation. But there may be more to the story. The U.S. is angry about Turkey's decision this week to buy Russian instead of U.S. missiles. India, meanwhile, continues to buy Iranian oil in the face of a U.S. sanctions push. Philip Levy is a senior fellow on the global economy at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. The Trump administration is much less enthusiastic about the idea that developing countries should get a break. And it is thinking, you know, this shouldn't just be a handout. This should be something reciprocal. Yet forcing India and Turkey to pay more tariffs on their U.S. exports could have unintended consequences. Turkey is already being courted by Russia and may need little more proof that dealing with the U.S. financially or diplomatically in Syria isn't worth it while India could finally push back on prior Trump tariffs that it initially shrugged off. India had held off on things like retaliating for steel tariffs, hoping that this would go well. So we may see something that looks like an escalation. This may unleash some of the retaliation. Levy says that could hurt the U.S. more than ending preferential trade status helps, and he thinks picking a fight with India also undermines Trump's larger foreign policy goals. It's an interesting example of how the Trump administration's overall strategy tends not to line up in that if you look at what they had described as their big approach to the Asia Pacific, it was renaming it the Indo-Pacific. They were going to sort of work on alliance with India. And so while they might be justified in this GSP move, it's not something that's going to bring warmer relations with India. Luke Fargus, the United Nations. Thank you for accompanying us here to the chef's table at West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. 
Smothered Benedict Wednesdays. We always begin weather from around the world along the banks of the Rogue River in the Rogue River Valley of Southern Oregon on the west coast of the continental United States of America, where it is currently 38 degrees Fahrenheit. We are looking to be a tad warmer than yesterday. We only got to the mid-40s yesterday. We should be in the low 50s today. Should be. We'll see about that. Uh, Currently, it is raining with the winds out of the east-northeast light and variable. We'll be picking up in about an hour and an hour and a half to five to ten miles and shifting out of the southwest, which will then bring the warmer weather and a lot more precipitation, of course. Looking for a daytime uh, rain total around a third of an inch. And uh, looks like we'll have, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, something less than a quarter of an inch tonight. And uh, let's see, the winds will continue at their clip of 5 to 10 miles through tomorrow, uh, yet they will uh, shift once again, and that time, or coming up, will be out of the west-southwest, just out of the southwest proper currently. Uh, oh, wow, so lots of rain, and let me bring this, uh, scroll this down a tad. Oh, we should be drying out. Uh, over the weekend Uh, we'll get through tomorrow and uh, then Friday and through the weekend should be a bit drier though humidity will be high and rain will be coming back into the region at the beginning of next week pollen is at none the the air quality index is a tad high for the good range at 28 parts per million and the daytime uv index is moderate at four gone up a little bit from yesterday barometric pressure is falling at 29.3 inches inches visibility is down to three miles and relative humidity is 99 percent relatively speaking as we do Weather from around the world is brought to you by people's personal weather stations that they purchased. These people planted these purchased personal weather stations somewhere on their property, and these people positively live around the world. London is 53 and cloudy. Paris is 53 with rain. Rome is 61 and sunny. Kiev is 38 with a light rain. Kabul is 31 and cloudy. Hong Kong is 66 and mostly cloudy. Tokyo is 50 with rain and a weather advisory for flash flooding in the area, so be careful. San Francisco, California is 54 degrees with rain and a small craft advisory on the bay and offshore. And New York, New York is 23 degrees fair with a weather advisory of also winds on the waterways so take care if you're on any uh craft whether small or large button up those top buttons hang on to your hats and stay warm and that is weather from around the world brought to you by people's personal weather stations that they purchased these people planted these purchased personal weather stations somewhere on their property and these people positively live on the world Ali of Reuters brings us this first amuse-bouche here at the chef's table at West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy, Smothered Benedict Wednesdays. The top U.S. general in Europe said yesterday that he would recommend that the United States should not sell Lockheed Martin Corporation F-35 jets to NATO ally Turkey if Ankara does not drop plans to buy the S-400 surface-to-air missile defense systems from Russia. Turkish uh, President Tayyip Erdogan has said that it is committed to buying the Russian system, despite warnings from the U.S.-led alliance that the S-400s cannot be integrated into the NATO air defense system. You know, sort of like a round peg into a square hole. 
My best military advice would be that we don't then follow through with the F-35 flying it or working with an ally that's working with Russian systems, particularly air defense systems, with what I would say is probably one of the most advanced technological capabilities. U.S. Army General Curtis Garparati, the head of U.S. forces in Europe, and he had said that during a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing. Scarparati is also the NATO Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. U.S. officials have said that if Turkey proceeds with the S-400 purchase, Washington will withdraw its offer to sell a $3.5 billion Raytheon Company Patriot missile package. Last month, Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut, or Mevlut, Kafasoglu said Ankara's purchase of Russia's S-400 missile defense system was a done deal. Well, if it's a done deal, you don't get the F-35s now, do you? Je te donne ce mon amour pour la vie entière. La promesse de me trouver à tes genoux Aussitôt que tu m'appelles Rester toujours fidèle C'est tout C'est tout Je te donne tous mes printemps Mes étés de mer Mes automnes Quand les feuilles tombent partout Si ce n'est pas une bonne affaire, je te donne tous mes hivers, c'est tout. The great Oliver Willis of Share Blue Media brings us this final amuse bouche here at the chef's table at West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. The Trump White House is refusing to comply with House Oversight Committee's repeated requests for information about why Trump's son in law, Jared Kushner, was granted a top secret security clearance over the objections of the CIA. And House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings is not pleased. In a statement, Cummings slammed the Trump administration for its attempt to bypass constitutionally mandated oversight of the executive branch. The White House appears to be arguing that Congress has no authority to examine decisions by the executive branch that impact our national security, even when the president's former national security advisor has pleaded guilty to lying about his contacts with foreign government officials, Cummings wrote. There is a key difference between a president who exercises his authority under the Constitution and a president who overrules career experts and his top advisors to benefit his family members and then conceals his actions from the American people, he added. The White House's argument defies the constitutional separation of powers, decades of president before this committee, and just plain common sense. Cummings concluded his letter by letting the White House know he plans to consult with members of the committee to determine our next steps. For weeks, the Trump administration has been stalling or and refusing to comply with requests from the committee on the process it used to grant security clearances, including to Kushner. Well, we know how that worked out. It was summarily and arbitrarily decided upon. Arbitrarily. It was summarily decided upon by individual one. Everybody knows that. There's no process. There's no paperwork. He said, do it. And they did and that will be coming out in uh, the report fairly soon well you know it takes a little bit of time at least okay that brings us to the end of our broadcast period for the day you know that netroots radio is broadcasting on and we will meet up tomorrow for metro shrimp and grits thursdays don't put sugar in your grits Okay, not for dinner, all right? And uh, so, yes, Metro Shrimp and Grits Thursday, so do stay tuned for that. Tune in, please do. But stay tuned all day and all night for all the breaking news on Netroots Radio as it breaks. And we'll meet up here tomorrow, right here in West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Bon appétit.
Je voudrais du soleil vert Des dentelles et des TF Des photos de bord de mer Dans mon jardin d'hiver Je voudrais de la lumière Comme en Nouvelle-Angleterre Je veux changer d'atmosphère Dans mon jardin d'hiver Je voudrais du frais d'Aster Revoir un latte coel Je voudrais toujours te plaire Dans mon jardin d'hiver Je veux déjeuner par terre Comme au long de golfe clair T'embrasser les yeux ouverts Dans mon jardin d'hiver Dans mon jardin d'hiver Dans mon jardin d'hiver 